Our scripture lesson for today comes from the book of Mark, chapter 3, verses 1 to 6. Another time Jesus went into the synagogue, and a man with a shriveled hand was there. Some of them were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus, so they watched him closely to see if he would heal him on the Sabbath. Jesus said to the man with the shriveled hand, stand up in front of everyone. But then Jesus asked them, which is lawful on the Sabbath, to do good or to do evil, to save life, or to kill. But they remained silent. And he looked around them in anger and deeply distressed at their stubborn hearts. He said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and his hand was completely restored. Then the Pharisees went out and they began to plot with Herodians how they might kill Jesus. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Have you ever been faced with a situation that you knew if you made the, the right decision or you did what you were supposed to that someone was going to be upset with you or maybe um, you realized that it was going to cause some level of, of personal sacrifice or, or inconvenience in, in the process. You know, there's a college student who, who has a, a roommate that's a good friend, but that roommate is making some choices that, if caught, could get both of them into trouble and, and even expelled from the university. Or maybe that... Uh, that coworker who is your friend and, and you wish the, the best for them, but but they make some have made some decisions that uh, are unethical, and in the process, it's not only a reflection on them, but it, it also is a reflection on on you because you're a part of the the company, and and maybe your job would even become in jeopardy because of the decisions that that they make. This morning, we're, we're continuing with our, our series from the, the Gospel of Mark, where we're calling the, the Miracles of the Messiah. And my first thought would be that a miracle is always a good thing. But yet, as we uh, look at the, this passage, we, we see that uh, this miracle is one that uh, begins to get Jesus in, in hot water. Everyone's not always happy with a, a miracle that, that happens. This is a miracle where the religious leaders are trying to entrap Jesus. As the story in this morning's scripture reading unfolds, Jesus has gone to the synagogue. Now, the synagogue is the place of worship. And every faithful Jew, they would go to, to, to the synagogue to, to worship on the Sabbath. God had, had told them that they were to have a day of rest, and, and that day of rest was the seventh day, and that, that seventh day was, was the Sabbath. And so we find that Jesus is regularly going to the, to the synagogue, even though you know, he was ushering in a new way. Jesus was Jewish, and he still practiced going to, to the synagogue on a, on a regular, on, on a weekly basis. You know, in the, in the book of Mark, we're only into chapter 3, and this is already the, the second time that we find Jesus in, in the synagogue. The, the first time he's gone, and, and as he's preaching, it, it says that the, the people were in awe of, of, of the things that he said, in, in awe of his preaching. Also, the first time he was there, he, he cast out an evil spirit, and, and now this time, as he's returning, there's a man with a, with a withered hand, a man who, who needs to, to be healed. Jesus is, is ushering in the, the, the kingdom of God. And in the midst of that, he's performing miracles that are, um, are showing his credibility that indeed he has been sent from God. On this day, as Jesus goes to the synagogue, there's a man with a, a shriveled hand. You know, he has a, a physical infirmity. Probably one hand is, is smaller than the other because of... of uh, probably years of, of not being able to, to use that hand and, and losing muscle tone and, and probably even losing the, the feeling with, with, with his nerves 
And as he went there on, on that day, maybe the, this man with the shriveled hand was there just like any other worshiper coming to, to the synagogue on, on the Sabbath. But there are some scholars that, that believe he may have been there as a setup. Believes that some of the religious leaders may have, have brought him there on that day to, to try and entrap Jesus. They, they planted him in the, in the crowd. Someone that had a, a physical need to, to see how it is that Jesus would respond. What, what would he do? So what, what's the big deal? You know, God has instructed the, the Jews that, that they were to, to rest on, on the seventh day, which is, it is the Sabbath. And when, when God gave them that instruction, what happened was human laws began to kick in. God says, said that they were to, to set up part the seventh day, the, the Sabbath, and, uh, as a day of rest. But in order to, to enforce what God had said, humans came up with a, a lot of laws, a, a lot of expectations of, of what you could do and, and what you couldn't do on, on the Sabbath. And so with the man-made rules, they said that you could help someone on the Sabbath to save their life, but if it wasn't life-saving and you could do the same thing for them on, on another day of the week, then, then you shouldn't do it on, on the Sabbath, but you should do it on another day of the week. And even there were some who believed that you shouldn't pray for someone's healing on the Sabbath uh, if you could pray for them one, one of the other days of, of the week. But Jesus knew what was going on. He knew the tension. And on, on the one hand, Jesus' character is that of, of kindness, of compassion, and of mercy. You know, he didn't want anyone to, to suffer, and he, yet he knew that, that uh, there were those who were watching how he was going to, to respond to, to this man with the, the withered hand. He knew that the religious leaders were, were trying to attract him. So Jesus invited the, the man with the shriveled hand to, to stand up in, in front of everyone, and Jesus posed a question. He said, which is lawful on the Sabbath, to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill? Now, the answer to that question seems to be uh, very obvious. Of course, it, it's best to, to do good and not evil. Of course, it, it's best to, to save the life. Whether, whether it's on the Sabbath or whether it's any other day of the week, doing good and, and helping others is always the right thing to, to do. The answer to Jesus' question seemed to be obvious, and yet what does it say about the religious leaders? They remain silent. They didn't respond to, to Jesus' question at that point. You know, verse 5 says that Jesus looked at the religious leaders in anger. Now, this is the only place in the gospel writings that says Jesus was angry. Now, I had to check it out because I, I read that in the commentary and I didn't actually believe it because I, I always, uh, when I, I see the story about Jesus clearing out the those who are buying and selling in, in the temple courts uh, you know, right after his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. I always have thought about that as being a righteous anger as, as Jesus chased them out of the, the temple courts. But the gospel writers don't say that Jesus was angry at that point. Now, I think my interpretation is, is still okay, even though it doesn't actually use the word angry. I, I think that that's an accurate interpretation of of Jesus' response to them as, they, as he's running out of the, the temple. But this is the only place in the Gospels that it says of Jesus that he got angry. Now, from my perspective, Jesus had every right to, to be angry about the situation, how the religious leaders were, were trying to, to entrap him. But that... Anger for that reason was not in Jesus' character. Because anger about that becomes about self. That, that's why I get angry. Go, you know, I'm offended. Someone took advantage of me. I, I'm not getting what I want. That's not what motivated Jesus in, in anger at, at that point. 
Jesus' righteous anger comes at the point that he saw someone else was being taken advantage of. Someone else was, was, uh, was being put down at, at that point. I believe that Jesus' righteous anger comes at the point that the religious leaders were using the man with a shriveled hand as a pawn. He was, they were using the man with a shriveled hand to, to get what they wanted. The religious leaders were more concerned about trying to entrap Jesus than they were concerned about the man with this debilitating need in his life. Well, how about you? Are there times when, when you are more concerned about getting what you want than how you go about achieving that goal? Are, are you willing to use other people or take advantage of other people in order to, to get what you want? That certainly seemed to be the case with the, the religious leaders. Jesus, on the other hand, was willing to take on personal risk in order to help another person. Jesus knew it would have been easier for him to do nothing at that point. It would have been easier for him to, to do nothing at, at that point, but in healing the man, he knew that he was going to stir the, the ire of the, the religious leaders. He knew doing what was right at that moment was going to cause problems for him on down the, the line. How about you? Maybe there's some of you who are, are struggling with, with a decision today. Maybe you're, you're struggling with what to do with an opportunity that, that is, has come your way. Maybe positive, maybe, maybe negative. Are you willing to, to do good? Are you willing to, to do the right thing, even if that makes others unhappy? And even if that puts you in a, in a difficult spot? Are you willing to do the right thing? Are you willing to, to do the good thing, even if it comes with a personal cost? 